everyone. Well, so it was a good morning of wood cutting. Um, now what we're going to do, we're going to quickly clean up the chainsaw, make sure that we don't put it away dirty this time, so hopefully it'll uh, be in better shape next time we need it. Um, so I thought I'd video that quickly for you. We will obviously speed it up um, when we publish, but we'll just quickly run through it and make sure everything's nice and clean before we put it away. Um, one of the things I've learned is I have to drain the chain oil reservoir uh, when I'm putting it away. If I don't, uh, the oil essentially just leaks out uh, over time anyway and just makes a mess in the, um, in the shed upstairs where we, where we keep it. So I've already done that. I've, re I've drained the oil now. Let's see how we go. Okay, so a bit of a clean up. Um, one thing I noticed is the, the air filter doesn't seem to be filtering properly because we did seem to be getting a little bit of dirt into the carburetor, which is not a good thing. So I need to research uh, whether those filters are readily available. Otherwise, I'll have to try and make another plan, possibly replace it with a foam filter or something like that. Other than that, all looks good. Um, I've quickly ran through the carburetor, just made sure just adjusted the carburetor a little bit because I don't know whether you noticed on the previous um, section when we were cutting wood, every now and again it seemed to hesitate a little bit. That's now all sorted out. Um, so it starts well, runs well, revs up well. Happy with that. Generally it's not in a bad, in a bad state. Um, I'm going to maybe try and pop this into the... I'm going to give it a bit of a clean up, get rid of the, most of the crud, and then put, pop it into the ultrasonic cleaner um, along with a chain and then we'll clean up the bar <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that um, yeah and then put it all back together and we should be in good shape okay okay well we've managed to clean everything we've got everything nice and clean this has uh, just come out of the ultrasonic cleaner you can see uh, how, how nicely that's come up uh, it really does a good job on this kind of thing. We've also uh, cleaned the chain, which I'll show you in a second. Um, and then what we did is we also cleaned out this groove and um, cleaned out the, this wheel on the nose, cleaned it up initially with the brake cleaner and then re-oiled it and uh, that's now ready to go as well. So we'll pop that back in. Pop it all back to back together, and um, get it all get it all finished. So here we got the chain again, 
put that through the ultrasonic cleaner, dipped it in some uh, brake cleaner as well, just to, to get rid of the, the, you know, the cleaning uh, liquid from the ultrasonic. Now what we need to do is make sure that we oil this properly, because obviously that would have taken all of the lubrication out of it. Um, so what we're going to do, I'm going to pop it back in, um, set it all up and then we're going to, I'll show you what I do. But basically, we want to make sure that everything is completely oiled up because we've removed all of the lubrication that there normally would be. And we need to make sure that we, um, essentially that we replace that as best we can. Um, especially now as it's going to be put away and it'll be away for a while. Don't know exactly when I'll be using it again. So, want to make sure that everything is properly oiled. So, couple of things that um, I will make sure are properly oiled is the, the screw for the adjusting, uh, for adjusting the tension on the, on the bar. Uh, a couple of pivot points here around the spring and in particular this area here where you've got again pivots and joints. We don't want to get any oil on the band because obviously, I mean, although it does get oil on it just naturally through uh, through the process of working, there's no need to put any um, unnecessarily on there. Otherwise, it's not going to work particularly well as a brake. So, we've done that. Um, what I'm going to now do, I'm going to try and get this cover back on um, and get the chain just loosely in and then we'll oil the chain up and uh, we should be good to go after that. And line this up. It's always uh, a little bit of a faff to get everything to pop into place. Mostly that band, trying to get that band around the um, around the drum. That seems to be the main the main problem. And uh, it literally just is a case of fiddling with it until it pops in. And um, I'll create a bit of space there. Okay, there we go. It's popped on now. As you can see there, the band is in and everything's in place. So we'll turn this back the right way. And Put these nuts back. Probably should have cleaned them as well, but to be honest, they, they're okay. Uh, while the camera was off, I also did um, I just I took the spark plug out again and uh, just checked the gap. It, look, it was okay. I. I closed it ever so slightly. Um, the manual says it needs to be 23 thousandths of an inch or 0.6 millimeters, um, which seems quite large to me. Um, so I made it 21. And uh, we'll see how that goes. Right. The, um, the general rule is to tighten this back nut just so that it's holding the bar. You see the bar is not dropping, and that should be enough. Then, uh, then we want to adjust the, the belt, I mean the chain tension. And we should see that start to tension up. It's almost there. Feels pretty good. I think I'm going to leave it there for now. Now, what I want to do, I want to make sure that this chain is well oiled. So I'm literally going to drench it in oil. Now, this is just engine oil. Obviously, chain oil is more sticky. But for now, I'm just going to use some engine oil.
from the chain oils, it, it, because it's so sticky, I think it also does tend to pick up more dirt. Um, and the dirt seems to stick to everything more. I mean, obviously it's sticky because it needs to, you know, it needs to be, it needs to resist being flung out, even though it does actually get flung out. So, so we'll just make sure in a minute there, you can see, <coughs> that's pretty well oil, hopefully you can see it on the camera, but that's oil all the way around. And, um, to be honest, we should be going this way. A little bit more. I don't know why my oil can started leaking. It's very frustrating because if I just leave it lying standing on the desk, I've come back and the desk is covered in oil. It's just, just annoying. I just don't make things like they used to. I haven't actually quite worked out where it's leaking from either. I, mean, I haven't looked that closely yet, but I guess it's probably that join there. Right, look, that's very well oiled now. I'm happy with that. I'm going to leave it there and um, just finalize this chain tension now. Because, again, because this is going away for a while, I'm not going to over-tension the chain. I really just want it to be um, you know, taut, but not tight, if that makes sense. Um, you know, that's it's sitting nicely in the groove there. It's not floppy, um, which is the main thing you want to avoid. I'm actually just going to leave it like that, and I just need to make a note to myself that before I use it again to make sure that I check everything which I normally do anyway so that shouldn't be a problem okay so there we go that's, that's pretty well done I'm happy with that and that is the chainsaw clean not much of a service but just a bit of a clean bit of a uh, tidy up checked a few things, made sure I did, to be fair, I did um, adjust the carburetor slightly, sorry, and um, but you can see there's still oil dripping off there, so that's a good thing. Right, well that's it for now, that's the chainsaw done, I'm going to put it away, and um, as I said earlier in the previous video, I don't have to worry about draining the fuel out of this thing. Um, if you use normal fuel, then uh, my suggestion is that you drain the tank, run the engine until it's dry, and basically cuts out through uh, fuel starvation, and then try to start it, especially with the choke on, pump the pump the uh, you know the little bulb thing, get all of that fuel through and out as much of it out of the carburetor as you possibly can, um, so that it doesn't. Uh, gum up inside the carburetor. These the little channels and the little jets and whatever in these carburetors are so fine that it, it really doesn't take a lot to, to gum them up. But because I'm using that aspen fuel, I know I don't need to worry about that. This tank is probably only about half full at the moment anyway, so I'm not going to bother with that. Um, I'll just put it away now, and uh, when I come to use it again, I know that it'll be in good shape. Alright everyone, thanks for watching. Uh, we're going to move over to the Ferguson now. We're going to do a small job on the Ferguson and uh, obviously that will be a different video. See you all soon.